morning everyone. I am currently sitting outside of U-Haul waiting for Justin to get here with the truck. Picking up a car hauler, which means we're hauling a car. Today's kind of a big day for me. Uh, we're going to go get the Impreza. If you don't know about this car, um, I've had it for about 10 years now. It's the car I drove in college and it's the first car I started modifying and I never finished it. And I think it's time, I think it's time to finish it. So let's go get it. What's going on? This ain't chief. Hey guys, what's going on? Cody Hillberry. This is my 1999 Subaru Impreza. You're in my garage today. I recently brought this here after renovating the garage. It's actually the first time I've had it set up to work on in we'll say three years. I've actually had the car for 10 years and it's been quite the journey uh, from where it was when I bought it to where it is today. And it's hardly close to being finished. Uh, there's still lots of work to do, but that's another video. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how we got here. What is going on here? What has happened the past 10 years? Why have I had a car for 10 years and it still isn't finished? We'll get to that. So 1999 Subaru Impreza L, L meaning loser. Base model, not the 2.5 RS that it kind of looks like now. 2.2 naturally aspirated motor, four speed automatic, uh, I think it had 15 inch hubcaps on it, steel wheels, brown on tan interior, but it was very clean, very well cared for. I think it had 57,000 miles, 50 something thousand miles when I bought it 10 years ago, and which was relatively low mileage at the time, being that it was 2013, summer of 2013, but I bought it. Didn't need anything except, you know, it had the typical Subaru rear fender well rust. Um, which I fixed once. Really didn't have any experience doing body work and uh, it turned out pretty bad. I mean, it was okay, but the one side failed at some point when I put bigger wheels and tires on, we'll get to that. But uh, whatever, good commuter car. Great commuter car for a 20 year old. Good on gas, easy to drive, great in the snow. Everyone swore by Subaru's all wheel drive and this car sold me on Subaru's all wheel drive. And at the time, you know, I lived out in the country and had plenty of gravel roads, especially in the winter, to go hoon around on. Well, that's how the front bumpers crack, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Great car for college. I drove it, maintained it. I've always been pretty mechanically inclined and I've always loved cars. So even though it was like a pretty vanilla car, I really enjoyed keeping it up, you know, maintaining it. Just some really minor things, like I changed the 
valve cover seals, with, you know, spark plug cover seals, basic routine maintenance. I kept up with it. You know, it kind of became a hobby just to, you know, keep it clean. Uh, I really enjoyed driving it. It handled fairly well. I mean, it wasn't fast by any means, but it, you know, it was, it was fun to drive. And I just like driving anything, so it wasn't too hard to please. But I really did fall in love with the all-wheel drive platform. A lot of waking up late, early mornings for 8 a.m. classes that were 10 miles away on a pretty nice, relatively nice, curvy, flat road. We had some we had some pretty sketchy mornings together. Yeah, <laughs> it really uh, cut my teeth on driving uh, like like an absolute idiot, I guess. Car put up with that pretty well. I guess I'll fast forward to like after college. So after college is kind of when you know I started working. I put wheels on it. Um, it wasn't like I bought wheels to make it look cool. I was looking for an extra set of tires and on Facebook Marketplace happened to find a set of sport edition brand wheels that actually had a more aggressive offset and uh, putting them on the car, I was like, hmm, I really cleaned it up a little bit. You know, I got rid of the steel wheels and hubcaps for, you know, these silver painted wheels that poked a little more, you know, kind of came flush with the fender. You know, that was cool, I guess. I started making some money and wanted to, I wanted to do little other things. So I, you know, I actually got Tanabi, Tanabi lowering springs. I had to replace the struts anyhow, so I figured new struts, lowering springs, why not? Sad okay, uh, definitely handled much better. Stickier tire, stiffer springs, lower center gravity, blast to drive, even in its automatic format. Um, so I'm like hanging out with my friends, they've all got cool cars, we're all kind of getting into hanging out together, working on cars together. Some point along the line though, I got really into reading rs25.com. Um, which was the forum for these cars, you know, for this generation, at least uh, in America. And wealth of knowledge, uh, some of that knowledge is still there. Unfortunately, in 2023, forums really aren't as active as they are today. Uh, however, in like 2015, it was still a really active forum and I just read, I probably read more of rs25.com than I did in all of four years of college. The thing that really piqued my interest in at the time it was extremely intimidating to me was manual swapping the car. Like I said, it was fun to drive, but like, as I did research, it was pretty clear that these cars with a five speed were significantly more fun to drive. Between the weight savings and the gear ratios, it seemed like it was a pretty decent upgrade too. I actually started looking around for a donor car because that seemed like it would be the cheapest way to go. I ended up buying a 1998 RS25 Arcadia Green Coupe. If you know anything about these cars, uh, an Acadia Green 2.5 RS Coupe is pretty desirable. Um, I don't know how many they made off the top of my head. Uh, I think there's there's rarer models, but that model was a fairly rare one. Had the gold RS five spokes on it, but this car was rusted so bad. I didn't even realize how bad it was rusted when I bought it. It had a uh, rod knock, so I got it super cheap. Um, but again, I was looking for a car, a donor car for the transmission which is what it became. As I started tearing into the car, I was kind of thinking maybe I could build the coupe down the road and like leave this naturally aspirated with the five speed and then, you know, restore the coupe shell and STI swap it someday. Unfortunately, that coupe was beyond saving. As I tore the interior out of it, the sunroof was rusted, the rear wells were gone, the whole underside in the rear. It looked like it sat in salt water. The drivetrain, other than the rod knock was good, so, that five speed ended up in this car. And uh, long story short, uh, with the help of some friends, we manual swapped this car, mostly working in the dirt in my dad's pavilion. I still remember the first time I started it up with the manual transmission in it, everything wired just so, so it would start. Went for a drive and it was like such a confidence booster. I'd never done anything to that caliber before. Like I said, I was pretty mechanically inclined, but I, I never, Man, I never pulled a transmission out of anything. So uh, to get this car drivable with a manual transmission was huge to me. But it was at that time too, I had already bought another daily driver. This was kind of already heading towards project car status. It's like, well, if I'm gonna start wrenching on it, I've already done a transmission swap. I wonder what else I could do to it, you know, while I'm in there. I got to talking to some friends that were more familiar with WRXs than I was. And again, reading a lot on forums, 
There were a few people at the time that documented turboing the naturally aspirated motor. And the more I looked into it, I realized that the EJ25D heads from that RS that I had bought as a parts car would bolt up to this motor. They would work theoretically at the time in my head. I wasn't 100% sure. With the 2.5 dual rover head cam heads, I could also just bolt up WRX turbos set up to it. Which now I realize that, you know, you can totally turbocharge the 2.2 single, you know, the phase two 2.2 single exhaust port heads. Like you can do that just as easy, if not easier than what I've done here. But I was learning as I went and on a really cheap budget, I was trying to make things work and I had these heads in front of me. I realized that they would lower the compression just a touch. It was pretty much bolt on from there with the WRX setup. The only thing I really had to do was notch my cross frame member, which I did and reinforced. I ended up creating problems for myself by doing this. First of all, I wanted to keep the stock engine harness as stock as I could. And if you've done this kind of thing before, you know, swapping motors in general in Subarus, you kind of keep the intake manifold and all of the engine harness that goes with that, with the car swap the motor and if you are within the right phase and compatibility with you know whatever motor you're swapping in that works i mean that's a pretty basic explanation of it so i wanted to try to keep as much of the stock engine harness engine management yada yada as possible so it has the 2.5 ej 25d intake because that's what bolts up to these heads but i actually made an adapter plate which i <laughs> I know it'll run in idle, but I don't, theoretically, I don't know how good of a thing I've made here. But basically, the original throttle body is bolted onto the 2.5 EJ25D intake manifold. And I've made this adapter plate so that the idle air control, or the map sensor and the idle air control valve will work how they're supposed to. Because the EJ25D has a separate external idle air control valve, which I made a block off plate for. I also had EGR, which I made a block off plate for. So I, I, I really did simplify the intake manifold. The only weird thing I really did there was make that plate, which it's, it's more or less a prototype. If it works, I'm going to make another one now that I know how to draw an AutoCAD and there's things like send, cut, send. I'm totally going to you know, make a real version of that adapter plate if this one works out to be okay. The only other weird phase one, phase two thing I had to work around was the spark plug wires were kind of weird. So I ended up just making custom spark plug wires that works with the EJ25D heads. Again, they're dual overhead cam. The 2.2 is single overhead cam. I guess making these custom spark plug wires was the best way of fixing that. I probably overcomplicated that, but it was a fun little project to do. And I made a custom plate to at that point, I had the motor out, I had everything out. I said, why not shave and paint the engine bay? Which all things considered, I wouldn't consider this a shave and tucked bay, uh, but it is significantly cleaner than you know a stock engine bay. I lucked out because the car didn't come with ABS from the factory, so that was one less thing to delete. And gosh, it's an eyesore to look at. So between that, the smaller battery, cleaning some stuff up, it really cleaned up the engine bay. And I painted it a metallic spray can gray. I think a dupla color, metallic gray, and I clear coated over that. Turned out pretty okay. I mean, for never painting an engine bay before, I was pretty over the moon at the time. Now that it's gathered dust for some years, it, it could definitely be polished and cleaned up, but I digress. It looks okay. Um, I also had the intake manifold. Um, I, I more or less shaved it. I cleaned it up a lot and had it powder coated along with the intake tube that I came up with, which it's literally just a, a three inch tube going into the turbo with a silicone adapter elbow. It's really stuffed in there. At this time during the build, I uh, Instagram uh, was still fairly new, only a few years old. And uh, I was posting pretty regularly to there. And then there was also the Subaru GC8 Facebook group, which I was pretty active in. I know there's, there's still like a handful of you guys that I met through that avenue and still talk to. And uh, hey, thanks for sticking with me through all these years. Uh, it's been a while, but just from posting that this is here and I'm working on it again, I've been really encouraged. Um, so that's awesome. 
to have that community still after all these years. I was doing some pretty ambitious things, I guess, for the time. There's an NAT group now. There's tons of NAT servers out there. There were at the time too, but it wasn't documented very well. So for me to have like confident information that this was going to work, took some digging and took a lot of like kind of taking this guy's build and this guy's build and like, I have a weird combination of parts here and I wasn't entirely sure it was going to work and it actually got like a pretty decent amount of attention at the time. People were kind of just waiting to see if I knew what I was doing or not. And I still don't really know if I knew what I was doing or not. Here we are. 2017 was kind of the last year that I really pushed on the car. Got the motor together in 2017 and then I got engaged and was to be married in October of 2017. So I had like three months to really push on this car. And uh, I did, I really pushed to try to get it done. Uh, my friends were rallying around me to help me. You know, I was working really weird hours at the time and coming home, working on this stupid late, crashing, sleeping like four or five hours, going to work, doing it you know, multiple nights a week. And it was definitely an outlet for me. And we really did push, my friends and I. Uh, they actually, my, my groomsmen, pulled their money together and bought me the clutch that I needed, which it's got a uh, 2006 single mass type flywheel and clutch, which is, you know, plenty of holding power for this setup, at least it should be. But we didn't finish it. I really wanted to drive this, you know, to and from my wedding, uh, but it didn't happen, that's okay. But I did move out at the time, you know, my wife and I to a small apartment, had nowhere to work on this car. Uh, my buddy Justin and I would take, I think we were going month, every Monday to work on the car, but you know, started a new job, married life. I just, it was, it was hard to dedicate time to drive to my dad's garage and work on it. So it kind of just got kicked to the curb. Unfortunately, I did at that time though, get it to start and run and drive for the first time. So that would have been 2018. Yeah, 2018 was when my buddy Justin and I were working on the car somewhat regularly. It's running on a Speedwino, uh, which is a Arduino powered uh, ECU. This particular one was built by Isaac Dalton at Speedy EFI. Should be fairly easy to tune. I really haven't messed with the tune too much. I've tried a couple other people's tunes that they've sent me and I was able to start idle, uh, go through a couple heat cycles and drive this car with that ECU, which is awesome. However, I didn't have brakes on the time. The, the one time I did drive it, I went up and down the road, uh, kind of using the clutch and the uphill to the garage to, to bring it to a stop. So very sketchy first drive, but I knew that at least things weren't interfering with each other. It was in time and know that this runs and it can run and it can be tuned at this point. I just haven't had the time, resources, or space to finish it. So here we are today. I think I covered the motor pretty well. It's on coilovers now. You know, I got rid of the lowering springs. I got a deal on some used HKS Hypermax 3 coilovers. I have not put a single mile on them and they're used. I have no idea if they're in good shape or not. They look nice. They're on the car. It's not low. Um, I could definitely go lower, but whatever. I got these Roto Grid 17 by nine offset 35 wheels. Half the interior's out. It has Braum Venom seats. I think that's the model. Gosh, it's been so long since I bought them. <sighs> you know what? At this point, I think I'm just going to clean the car. I've probably taking 50 takes of me talking to the camera. I'm really new to the YouTube. I'm not great at this. Um, I'm better talking to people and not my camera. Um, so I think I wanna clean the car, kind of take some B-roll. It doesn't sound too bad, right? Try that.
how this is the worst possible way to wipe down a car. Like, don't do this. This is horrible. But I literally don't care about this paint. Uh, the car is going to get repainted at some point. It's just so filthy. I want to be able to work on it without it, like, dusting me out, you know? So another thing I had tried when I, you know, 2015, 2016, when I was working on this car pretty regularly and posting it on Instagram a lot, um, I thought maybe I could try for some sponsorships. Um, there was a couple things I was going to buy anyway. So I reached out to the manufacturer and said, Hey, I'm buying your stuff. I really like your stuff. Is there any kind of deal we can work out where you give me a discount and, you know, I tell people about you and sure enough, D and D steering wheels or D&D interiors rather, Mishimoto radiators and Brahm seats actually gave me pretty hefty discounts because I said I was willing to, you know, tell people about them. But that's a pretty cool thing, I guess, if you're gonna buy a part anyway, especially from a smaller manufacturer, reach out to them, see what they say. I reached out to HKS too, but they said I just wasn't cool enough. Boy, they're gonna regret that later when I'm stupid famous on the YouTube. definitely been mice in here which is unfortunate but kind of just the reality if you leave your car in storage long term especially if you're not in and out of it um, looks like a pretty nice place for a mouse to stay warm so kind of can't blame I can't blame them It would have been nice while I was, you know, sitting in a dusty environment for three plus years. I would have found it. Here's a part I regret buying. I bought used four pot, two pots and probably the worst shape you've ever seen. Uh, the fronts are steel and the rear are aluminum. I could probably save the rear, but I think these are too far gone. Seriously, this is after I, oh my gosh. All the plastics kind of need redone. Um, what I could swap over from the RS25 I did, uh, but a lot of these I painted. Um, I didn't do the worst job painting them, but after being moved around, removed, etc., cetera, um, you, get, you get paint chips and stuff, so. in here um, actually isn't as long as it's sad it's not the worst I've seen but um, it does have a bit of a musty smell to it um, hopefully they didn't do any damage I'm mostly concerned about my seats uh, those Brahm seats and uh, the RS rear seat but uh, we'll see um, this isn't the nicest RS seat it's from that coupe um, it's actually got a cigarette burn or two We'll see how it cleans up. We might not use this. 
part of my mission to clean up the engine bay, I actually relocated the spray reservoir to the trunk. I extended the harness and the hose go into it. So my windshield reservoir is back here and mounted. So I guess that's cool. I don't know. Well, hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to watch me ramble on about a project that I have. In this video, you know, we went over the history of the car. In the next video, I'd like to talk about what's next for the car, uh, the immediate goals and the long-term goals that I have for this, as far as getting it on the road, getting it drivable, and then beyond, which, you know, I want to get this car looking as nice as it can. Um, this is a life car for me, and I want to treat it as such. I don't want to cut corners. And some of that will be undoing past things that I've done, and that's okay. We got to start somewhere. That's just, to me, that's just part of the process, you know, kind of learning as we go and in some some cases undoing the things we've done in the past. You may have also noticed in the background of some of the shots, the uh, red wagon. I have a 2005 Subaru Outback XT. That's been a pretty wild story with that car as well. Currently it's very drivable, very, very fun and enjoyable, but I do have a playlist on it. Uh, just some driving videos, just some quick things here and there, just things I was doing to get my feet wet and get more comfortable with the camera. But check that out if you're interested. Um, there'll definitely be more videos on it to come. I have quite a few projects lined up for it too. And then finally, um, the garage that I'm in uh, is a garage that I've been working on for about a year now. Uh, doing a lot of renovations, just trying to spruce the place up and make it efficient to work on projects like this one. Um, still pretty humble, but I'm very blessed to have it and I uh, am very excited for what's next. It's about 80% done as far as I'm concerned and I do have a playlist on that as well if you want to check that 